Hi guys, we are ready to get started. We are doing simple steps to speaking. I am Diamond Shannon Hudson, and I am here just to share some awesome information on how to become an amazing speaker, how to be able to get your point across, get people to listen to you, feel more confident, and I'm excited because I absolutely love speaking to other business builders. And I know that everybody on this particular webinar, you're on this call because you want to be able to get out there and share Young Living with other people. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Before we can really talk about speaking, you have to make some time for Diamond. I think that there's kind of like this miscommunication. When people get into network marketing, we just think, boom, it's gonna happen. And we have all these great ideas and all these pictures, but we don't even set aside any time to be able to do it. Now, the truth is, you have to. You have to look, what are your plans for the next full year? You have to fill in all the non-negotiable events, like holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, family trips, work trips, Young Living's Grand Convention. All of those need to be put on this big, ginormous calendar. And you can just go get a big poster board, and you can put in the 12 months, or you can go buy a big calendar that has all 12 months, because you need to see the big picture. In addition to that, you need to make plans and know what you're going to do monthly. What are the things that you already do? What what are the upcoming big commitments that you have for the next 90 days and any seasonal extras like we're coming up right now on Thanksgiving obviously that's gonna take some time even if it's just that Thursday right but usually we have prep work we do before it maybe Black Friday is a day you like to go out and do all your fun shopping and and you know we're like our family we like to decorate the tree the next day so put that on there raking leaves and eaves in October that's not that's not something you do on a regular basis but it is those monthly things that are still gonna take time uh, then you have like your weekly things you got to fill in the things that you do every single week these can be things like you know laundry on Tuesday church on Sunday and Wednesday kids soccer on Tuesday and Saturdays all that has to be filled in and then you're gonna take your dailies to fill in the things you do every day we're talking your work schedule wake sleep exercise personal time family time personal hygiene cook and clean because what you're gonna find out is you are already a very busy person in other words you're not just sitting around eating bonbons your time even if it's filled up watching a favorite show now and then all of those things those are all taking your time every minute of every day and you have plans you're doing things and if you don't make a plan and look at the big picture you're gonna come out at this confused right you're you're trying to stop time and fit in all these great things because you want to go diamond and you're gonna go do these meetings go to this and go to that and go talk to this person and, and set up all these appointments but you never really made the time so right now before we talk about speaking and how to share with people let's make some time for diamond what are some things you can do the first thing you got to realize is there are some non-negotiables in your life for my family for us time spent in the Word. I am a believer and I spend time in the Word. I spend time just one-on-one -on -one with God and that's a non-negotiable. I spend time with my amazing husband. Brian is my best friend. I want to be able to spend time and play with him and go places and, and just one-on-one. -on -one. Family fun night, it's non-negotiable. We get together every single Thursday. We have dinner, we play games, just different things. That's important to me. Even our grown kids that are out, we get together. That's connection time. In addition to that, we're a homeschool family. We have been for the beginning we have four children they've never been to school and that's important to me it wasn't a it was not something I'm willing to give up so those were our non-negotiables and big parties our kids like to have a bunch of friends over all at one time we just got done with this um, great harvest Halloween thing that we did and my teenage daughters had I don't even know 20 30 people that were over and it was just a lot of fun we enjoy doing that I don't want to give that up and I wasn't willing to give up peace in our home I want this is a safe sanctuary I wanted our kids to feel like it was a safe sanctuary that when we're here we are all here together it's peaceful it's quiet but there's also some things that I had to be willing to set aside when we decided we wanted to go diamond when we decided we wanted to build this amazing young living dynasty that we now have there were some things that we needed to set aside for now like we were a part of our sound and AV team at our church my husband did sound I did the PowerPoint and projector and that stuff and we had to be willing to say you know what for this season in our life we're gonna let somebody else take over this because you have to be able to free up some time because we can't even talk about speaking and teaching classes until you find some time to do those things uh, we were the choreographers for our dance team at our church and so we had to choose that for a time we're gonna let that go and let somebody else step up and I think that was really one of the most interesting things to me is how all of these jobs that I thought were things that I had to do how other people stepped up I thought there would be nobody but you know what people filled in the spots I'm a homeschool consultant 
And what that meant is by choice, I went out and I helped people identify what would be the easiest thing for their kids to learn, how their personalities are, to help them identify which um, school curriculum to use because every child is different. And I absolutely love doing that. But for a season, I said, you know what, I'm going to step out of that so that I can focus on this goal. And for our family, I also had to give up some free time with my babies. And I had always been a stay-at-home mommy. I had took taken care of my kids. And even when we had jobs, I was able to take them to everything we did. We owned a cleaning company when we first got into Young Living. And our kids, we packed up their homeschooling stuff. And they came to the different places where we cleaned. And they'd sit at the desk or the table or the couches. And, and they did school. But I had to be willing to say, for this season, because I know where we're going and I know what's going to happen, we're going to set aside some time to be able to focus on going diamond and so we even talked with our kids and we said this is what's going to happen this is what we're choosing to do this is why we want to do it and we discussed with them what that meant and so we made some deals with them knowing that you're going to have to give up some time with mom and you're going to have to take up some more chores that you didn't used to have to do and we're going to take turns with who's doing laundry and who's cooking dinners and just going through all those things and then for them, we said when we hit the, when we achieve the rank of diamond, you can plan a cruise and we will go, actually it was for a full month, we can go away on vacation and you guys can pick and choose where we go. And so they were willing to give that up knowing that it was for a season, for a push. Um, I had to give up a spotless home. I had a cleaning company because I am very, uh, hmm, my husband likes to say I'm a control specialist, so we'll go with that, but I really love that spotlessly clean, shiny, beautiful windows, had a schedule, even knew what day, which day um, cupboards were getting cleaned out, and you'd rotate that through so your house always stayed spotless. I had to say, you know what, for this season, this is not the most important thing in my life, and I'm going to let some things go. We didn't get filthy, but we certainly didn't have that same spotless schedule that I had because we, we chose, we made a, cho a choice, euchre. Now don't you judge me, euchre was something I absolutely loved and enjoyed. We are on a euchre team, I was very, very good at euchre and uh, you know competitions and it was fun for me. But for a season, I said, you know what, I can let euchre go to be able to build this amazing dynasty. So for us, we looked at the whole thing. We looked at the full year, monthly, weekly, daily, and we made some choices. And you're gonna to have to do the same thing. You fill in all those things we just talked about. You fill, fill in all the upcoming stuff, everything you have for the next 90 days, your seasonal stuff, your daily stuff. Fill it in and then go back and decide what can you let go for a season? Just, I'm not saying forever. I'm saying, what if for the next 90 days or maybe the next six months or you know what, even the next year, what if you had to make that commitment and said, you know what, for the next four years, I'm going to step away from some of these things. Maybe not all of them, but for the next four years, I'm going to commit to making the time to go diamond. I'm going to give it the same thing. Because if you had a full-time job, if you were out there getting paid hourly for your job, you would have to show up and work how many hours? If you're working a full-time job, you're looking at 40 hours plus your drive time, and it would be non-negotiable. And there would be things you would want to go do, but you can't because you have to work a job. Birthdays come up, but you still have a job. What would happen if you actually took that same 40 hours and you worked it for your future, for your dynasty, to build it to diamond? Four-year career is an excellent book that really talks about that, uh, using your time wisely. I'm just saying. So do you know where you're going? After you've really looked at this big schedule and you know the full year, you, you got to ask yourself some questions. What rank will you walk across stage at Young Living's 2016 Grand Convention? What's your plans? Have you made plans? Because you should know it. And how many members on your team do you want to go to Grand Convention? If you don't have a clue, then you won't know if you were successful at it. How many silvers, how many golds, platinums, diamonds, how many crown diamonds and royal crown diamonds do you want to see from your organization walk across stage? And then you go monthly. How many open meetings will you teach? How many classes are you going to do? How many new people will you share Young Living with? How many appointments will you have in depth with your members? You know, what are you going to do? How many follow-ups? How many team building workshops will you do? How many care calls are you going to do? How many conference calls, webinars, periscopes, however it is that you build? How many random quickie events can you do? That's things like farmers markets, expos, green in the park, just things that you're going to pull up monthly and weekly. What are your plans? So you have to literally make a plan of action so that you know if you succeed and then you take your daily and what you get done each day. Those are the things that are going to dictate your action steps. You get to pick those. You get to say, okay, so I gave up two hours of you know, playing euchre with my friends. What is worth it for that? What am I going to do? Am I going to sit and organize my office? 
Well, organizing my office does not build my organization. It does not change my future. If I'm giving up time playing with my kids, I want to make sure that it was an investment. I want to invest that. Uh, your time, time once spent is gone forever. That's just the way it works. When I'm working, I work. And when I play, I play. I don't feel guilty when I take time off and, and go do the birthday parties and all the fun stuff because it, I use my time wisely. I mean, what could you do for your business with 30 minutes? You know, one of the things in, in 30 minutes, you can send 30 emails or messages. You can create an event flyer. You can write a group newsletter. You can post an event or a class on social media. You can write a blog. Uh, stop somewhere and talk to six people. You only need 10 in a day anyways. It takes five minutes a person. You can get a lot done in 30 minutes. It's just using that time wisely and don't just let it slip through your fingers. What are you going to do? What could you do with your business if you only had 15 minutes? I hear people say, you don't understand. I'm really busy. I only have 15 minutes between picking up this one and dropping off this one from there. You know what? In 15 minutes sitting in a parking lot where you're picking up your kids, you could text 30 people. You could make three care calls or you could do two leader base calls. And one of the easiest ways on phone calls is to legitimately say, I'll pick up the phone and say, I know you just got your kid. I'm so excited for you. I've only got about five minutes. Which oils have you already played with? It just gets that conversation going and I, people recognize that I'm not going to waste their time. They answer the phone when I call because they know I'm not going to talk for 45 minutes about absolutely nothing. Um, same thing with my leaders. I give them a call and I say, listen, I've got about 14 minutes. I got 10 minutes. I got 12 minutes, whatever. Tell me what new and exciting. What can I do for you? How can I help you? Those are things you can do. You can answer 15 emails. An email should take you about a minute. Most of the things that you say in your emails are a lot of copy and paste answers. You gotta realize people come through phases. And so I do a lot of typing my emails and then when somebody asks a question, I can just copy and paste the answer, add whatever bibbits they need so I don't have to think about it over and over. Same thing with that 30 minutes for an, a flyer. Some of you were going, are you kidding? It takes me three hours, two days, five weeks. You know what, depending on the personality, you're right. You can spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours creating some of this stuff. But the truth is, I choose to set an egg timer. I just turn the old fashioned egg timer, ding, 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 ding. that's what I use. And I set it and I, I give myself that deadline. At the end of 30 minutes, I'm sending this out, so I better like it. And what it does is it helps you focus your energy. I don't answer text when I'm trying to create something. Whatever I've chosen to do, I do that full-heartedly, my, all of my attention there. And then when it's time to answer text, that's when I do it. It's more time effective than jumping from one thing to the next and trying to get your focus back. Um, that same 15 minutes, you can do three great tweets or a Facebook post. You can Skype or do a quick periscope with a possible abundance. Right, You can do a seven-minute periscope and still have seven minutes to go do other things. Jim Rohn, I love him. You eat, Either you run the day or the day runs you because either way, 24 hours is going to go by. What are you going to do with it? Either way, Grand Convention is going to come. It's going to be here in about six months. What rate do you want to be when you go? Either way, it's going to happen. So we just have to make some choices. It doesn't mean that you can't plan fun. You can, you can play with your kids, you can have all those things, and you can feel confident at the end of the day that you accomplished the most important things on your task. So when it comes to classes, things we're gonna speak at and share with, what types of classes are there? There's one-on-ones, there's in-home parties, there's make and take parties, there's three-on-ones, there's webinars, online classes, periscope sessions, conference calls, three-way calls, hotel meetings, hands-on workshops. There's even big, huge conferences where you have several hundred people come together. And the thing that you gotta ask yourself on all of those, there is not one way that is the most important. It's not one specific type of class or meeting or, or, or any of those things. I'm telling you, the most important thing of every one of these classes is asking yourself why. What's the reason for the class? Why are you getting together? If you don't know why you're having the class, again, you're not going to know if you were successful at it. So ask yourself, am I doing this one-on-one -on -one or this make and take because I want to personally enroll people? That's a great reason to have class. There's nothing wrong with that. Am I doing it because I want to build depth? I've got some people that are wanting to build. It's helping me get to a new rank. They're in the right leg and I'm working on helping them build their organization. That's fantastic. Are we doing it for just product education? There is a place for having classes that are just plain on product, teaching product, sharing the product, letting people know why they need our supplements. There's huge reasons behind doing that, making sure that we keep everything the right way. Our business education. 
I think that the business education, just like this class we're doing right now, is just important as product education. I think that you need to know why we have Sulfurzyme and how amazing and all the systems that it works on. But I think you also need to know our compensation plan and how amazing it is and why you teach classes and how you teach classes and how to set up your time and use it effectively. That's business education. Then we have personal development. Every single successful person you ever meet is always teaching and training themselves. We listen to audios, we go to events where our life is spoken into so we can turn around and help other people. So are you having the class because you're doing personal development for yourself, which means you're you're stepping out and learning something? Are you doing personal development for your people? Getting together, studying a book, going over some information they didn't know, watching a series. Are you doing the event because you wanna increase OGV? That's a great reason to have an event. It's, there's no judgment on any of these. Just understanding the reason for the class so that you know how to focus your energy, how you know how to focus your thoughts, your concentration, and enrolling extravaganza. I love these. We do these about every three months in our area. And every single person that brings guests, there's incentives for them. And, and the guests themselves, there's incentives for them and incentives for helping them get started right away. And this is a way for us to help everybody on our team quickly be able to build their organization. So those are things that we do. It helps everybody. Is it just for fun? Is it a reward? Is it a community outreach type? thing. Those are a blast. People need that. This is a community. Young Living is a community of like-minded individuals. So we have to add that. We have to have the fun. We have to have the relationships. We have classes that we do every single Monday and they cover a lot of business um, product education. They also cover some business education. But the primary reason for those, truthfully, there's enrolling going on. But the biggest reason is community. It gives people a place to get together, chit chat, talk, and build those friendships. That's why we do them every single Monday and we really encourage our people to do the same thing because you have 30, 40, 70 people depending on which classes you're at and they get to get together on a regular basis and they develop friendships. It becomes a hobby. Some people are just lonely. So identify the why for the class because when you know the why for the class it gets a lot easier to be able to speak towards that goal. You have to have a plan of action. Are you doing it just for practice? I love that reasoning. I hear people especially we've got our um, 1090 Facebook page, which is open to everybody. Everyone's welcome to join that. But you'll hear people say, I had a class and I wanted there to be people and nobody showed up. What should I do? Practice. When that happens, you turn on your periscope, you have that camera faced at you and you do the class just like you're talking to a room full of people because those people on scope, they have no idea. And quite frankly, if you're still at that stage, this is great practice. Get out there, share, because you never know who's going to pop on that scope and be a part of it. It's exciting. It's fun. Do what you committed to do. And I'm here to tell you that happens to everybody. Don't get sad because nobody showed up. At least you showed up. And quite frankly, you're the most important person at the meeting. You were there. You were supposed to be there. It's all a process. And the more you continue, the more you commit, it's going to happen. I know there was a time that Brian and I drove, all, we live in Michigan, and we drove all the way down to the, almost the it was the other side of Ohio. And even the person that had asked us to come do the class didn't show up. It happens to everybody. So don't feel like it's just you. You got to understand it happens to everyone. Is the event, is the class for duplication? And what that means is are you doing a class and partnering with somebody else so that they can duplicate and do it again later? I think that's really important to know that everything we do will be duplicated whether it was good or whether it was bad. So when you're doing your classes, you're duplicating something that is easy and simple for other people to follow. If you're up there just because you love speaking and you want to be amazing and you want everybody to know how amazing you are and it's about the amazing you, you're going to be the only one building your team. But if you really want to build a multi-level network marketing company, this is about getting other people to be able to duplicate what you're doing, be successful, and feel amazing about doing it. So one of the things you got to ask yourself when it really comes to building for Diamond and, and learning how to speak successfully, you got to ask yourself, is your body trying to sabotage your success? See, people form opinions of you in the first few seconds after seeing you. It has very little to do with exterior clothes, your makeup, your hair, or your body shape. This is an instinctual assessment. It's based far more on what we see and feel about the other person than on the words that they speak, the clothes they wear, the color of their hair. A strong opinion is formed before you speak a single solitary word. And that effect happens both ways. You are making assumptions and have feelings about each other um, in a mere seconds. 
And we know that to be true. This is a subject you really need to research. I think you should spend a good 10 minutes every single day just on this and learn to adjust your body because your body signals are heard so much louder than any words you could ever speak. And it happens so quickly. One of your quick tips when it comes to speaking is smile and make eye contact. And I mean a sincere smile. Get out there. And if you're not used to this, because some of you, quite frankly, you got wrinkles in the face because you frown so much. I want you to practice it. Smile at yourself. Look yourself in the eye in the, in the mirror and smile. Smiling has this automatic thing. When somebody sees a smile, people will automatically smile back. When we make eye contact, it shows a feeling of trust. When we tip our eyes and we don't look directly at somebody and we're looking down at their nose or we're looking at their hair or for some of you that close your eyes when you talk, you need to stop. People need to see those eyes. It's a feeling of trust immediately and it may be something you need to have, need to practice that you start doing. It's so interesting to me the changes that take place when we even start faking it. One of the reasons we tell people to do the 1090, and again, you can go to that website and check that out, but it, it's getting in the habit of forcing yourself to go out and speak with people, of going out and smiling. The next quick tip, put your shoulders back and your chin up. So when you're talking to people, you want to have a smile on your face, you want to make eye contact, you want your shoulders back, you want your chin up. It changes your posture. It changes what people see and think instinctually about you. Again, you might not be used to this posture. You might be used to the chin down and looking lower and your shoulders scrunched back. But right now while I'm talking, I want you to sit up straight in your seat. I want you to throw your shoulders back and I want you to lift your chin just a little bit, just a little bit. And I want you to smile as I'm talking. And you can feel in you, after just a few seconds, you start to feel a little bit better. You feel a little more com comfortable. You feel a little more energetic. And that's exactly what we put out there. If you don't think so, we got to just talk about some of this. Keep your arms open. So your posture is your arms open. So they're, they're not hanging down at your side. They're not in your pocket. They're not in front of your body. They're not crossed. You want to keep your arms open. You want to keep your palms up. Palms up, it's so important. Google palms up, palms down, and pointing. It's absolutely amazing. Some of the studies that have been done showing that just palms up and what people feel when you have your hands up versus palms down when you're trying to control them versus pointing when they feel like you're telling them what to do in the perspective that people have. When your hands are up, people feel very trustworthy. They want to follow you. They're like, oh, she's so amazing. When your hands are down, they feel like you're getting a little bit bossy. They feel like you're telling them what to do. But boy, you start pointing and your score mentally goes down immediately. It was really difficult for me when I first started learning this because I'm a pointer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a pointer. Go do this. Take care of this. And instead I had to learn to switch that and just keep my hands up. And when I talk, my hands towards the ceiling, I could still gesture, still have my hands moving. But instead of the point, switching it to hands up, huge difference. Again, practice it. Stand in front of a full length mirror and start talking and sharing and speak loud. Speak with a smile. People do not want to work with a low talker. Nobody wants that. When you're just whispering and people can't really hear you. See, it's annoying. And you're just on a recording. People don't want to say, what? I'm sorry. Excuse me. And they're trying to lean in to hear you. Speak like you have something to say. Speak from your diaphragm. Speak loud. Speak excited. And put a smile on your face even when you are on a, a conference call where they can't see you when you're on a webinar. That smile makes a difference. You can hear a smile in somebody's voice. It also generates a different energy. Speak up. Speak with a smile. And then here it is. When you're discussing money, stay calm. It is, it is so interesting as we have people practice, because that's one of the things we like to do is have people practice in front of groups. And we have this great catalog introduction, which you can find on YouTube, where we use Young Living's catalog to be able to introduce people in about 15 minutes to Young Living. And so people will pick up the catalog and they'll be doing great and they'll be talking about Gary Young and they'll talk about our seed to seal and they'll go through all these great things until they get to the page where it has the kit. Because when you show them the kit, you also tell them it runs between $150 and $260, depending on which kit you'd like to get started with today. So you get to pick your diffuser, you get to pick which products. It's just, it, 
what happens is people go from that excited introduction to who Young Living is, but because they're uncomfortable with the cost or with money or thinking people um, want something from you or what will people think if I tell them they have to pay for it or nobody can afford it. And what happens is the posture changes very quickly. When they flip to that page, their chin comes down, their eyes usually lower, their voice changes and they will say it's you know it's um it's you you can get started for like $150 we also have this like $40 kit that you can do and they change everything and what that person perceives in a nanosecond what they perceive is something sketchy something isn't right they don't know what they, they they're excited it's been great everything's good they liked you and all of a sudden you're doing something sneaky you don't seem to be trustworthy anymore. And it's because your internal feelings of feeling like it's not okay to talk about the money or it's not okay or they don't have enough money or all these preconceived ideas you have in your head, they feel that instantly even if they didn't have that problem. That's why if you happen to have the same um, excuse every time you're getting ready to close the sale, you're like, I gave them samples, they loved them, I did this, it was great, everybody was happy, but no one enrolled, and that's happening to you. Or you say something like, everybody, everybody gets upset because of the social security number, everybody gets upset, they don't have enough money, all these different things. It's because when you get to that point, your expectations that they're going to have a problem with it actually pop up. That's what you actually have happen over and over again because your posture, what you're putting out there, your thought, your energy is telling them, ah, something's wrong. Run. Run. And instead, number six, when talking about the money, I want you to stay calm. I want you to practice in the mirror or talking to your dog or talking to your spouse or talking to your best friend. And I want you to go over that spot where you pull out the application and say, here, start filling this out. And I want you to do it with your chin still up, your shoulders still back, your palms still up, a big smile on your face, hand them the paper, hand them the pen, hand them the computer, hand them the phone, however it is that you choose to enroll people. But I want you to stay calm. I want you to hear yourself saying it over and over again, whatever your closing line is, because everybody does it a little bit different and I want you to play with some things some of the oils that are phenomenal as a speaker one my all-time favorite is fennel fennel is a beautiful amazing oil and this is a dietary oil that you can you know you can put it in your tea you can sip on it it's a great way to get it into the body but one of the beautiful things that fennel does because the frequency is it allows us to speak our own truth it frees up that thing inside us that says I'm not good enough I'm not smart enough I'm too stupid I don't get to share I can't talk you know we're told from the time we're teeny tiny little babies what do we tell our little ones shh quiet shh, it's okay and we rock them and we try to quiet them down and even if they coo and they go and they get too loud we're like oh shush 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 and kids are laughing and playing in church and what do we tell them be quiet be quiet shh don't shh don't don't then we send them to school and they're told to be quiet and sit down and then they get bigger and older and everything they're doing quiet shh quiet shh and then they've got their friends as they get into grade school and and not grade school uh junior high and high school and you're told you're stupid and you're not smart enough and you're not good enough and then we send them to college where they're told to just sit still and listen to everybody else tell them what to do and then we get jobs and we can't stand up for ourselves and it's no wonder that the average person would rather be the person in the casket than the person giving the eulogy because it's not okay to speak. But I want you to know one of the things that fennel kind of unlocks is the ability to speak your own truth. It's a very inexpensive oil. It is a delicious oil. And oh my goodness, what if? What if that was this little kick that you needed and magnify your purpose, just the name of it, putting it on and magnifying your purpose and thinking about what you want your purpose to be, it changes things. Gathering. I love the feeling that gathering is gathering other people to me, that people are drawn to me like a magnet. That's just one of my things. Inner child and learning to enjoy the fun in things again. Highest potential. Isn't that something we all want? I want my children to live life to their highest potential. I want to myself personally to live at my highest potential. Motivation, just, just the word of it. We all talk about it. We, we go to things to be able to get motivated, but motivation is something we have to do every minute of every day, back and forth to ourselves. Start using the oil and see what happens. Ula, grow. It's about changing what you've done. If you want something new, if you want something different, you have to be willing to do something you've never done before. 
That's how you get something you've never had before. And Ula Grow, that's a part of that white angelica. It helps to keep our little hearts safe so we don't feel all the trauma when people say no and I'm not interested and not now. White angelica is just that little coat of protection. Ula feel your specialty, the way that you build, the ideas that you have, the things that you want to do in Young Living, that is your field, your skill, your amazingness. And step up to that. Let that be you. Don't try to be Shannon. Don't try to be any other leader. Choose to be you and take those amazing things and try them and share them. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. Try a new thing. Share a new way. Just practice it. Nothing good, nothing amazing happens without practice. You didn't learn to walk the first time without falling. You fell over and over and over and over again. You didn't learn to ride a bike instantly. Driving a car was awkward when you first started. Well, so is speaking, whether it's speaking one-on-one, -on -one, speaking to strangers, speaking to groups of people, speaking to thousands and thousands of people. Every one of those things take practice. So practice it. If you're using a script, say it over and over and over again until it feels comfortable. Switch it, tweak it, change it so it feels like you. If you're using a PowerPoint and you're following somebody else's PowerPoint, say it over and over and over again out loud, not in your mind. Say it out loud. Speak those words so they become com comfortable and you feel confident in doing it. See, thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. That inner voice that we have, oh, no one cares, not even a little. I'm serious. Right? Those thoughts that we play in our little head, in those stories, I'm not good enough. No one ever shows up at my meetings. I see people say that, and I don't think you understand that we're speaking that. Nobody loves me. And those are the thoughts and the things that we play over and over. No one would enroll with me. Well, those things that you're saying, those things, I'm not smart enough. I never finish anything I start. Those thoughts that you play over and over in your head, you can be out there talking to people over and over and over and over and over, and you sit down with them, but if your internal voice tells you no one would ever enroll with me, then they're not going to enroll with you, no matter how good you did it, no matter what the words were. Instead, you have to rewrite the thoughts. And understand that body posture we're talking about, this heads up, arms out, palms up. Now, this isn't what I want you to do in a meeting, but I want you to understand that this is an instinctual thing. This is what we do when we're happy, when victory, when we have conquered. It is everywhere. It is every single culture. Even the people watching the game get excited with it. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it is football, whether it is soccer, whether it is anything that you do that you feel amazing when you are excited. And you and again, this starts from little. This uh, Toddlers do this. Babies babies do this. So what about before you went out there and you're going to go do that speaking engagement, you're going to go talk to strangers, you're going to go do one-on-ones. If you had that little pep talk with yourself in the car before you went and you said, I am amazing. I'm excited about this. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do this thing. And you take that posture because you know what science is telling us? Science is saying that that posture of those hands up and yes, and that feeling when you just pump it, even if it's not real and you're doing it to pump yourself up, do you know that your body gets in on it with some hormones and kicks out some different messengers and different things happen inside the mind? Same thing with you can be really, really sad and you can feel overwhelmed and you can start smiling. And you can start smiling. And the act of smiling begins changing the chemicals that are going on in your little body. All by itself. Just the act of smiling. Now imagine smiling while doing a body posture. Imagine smiling while doing a posture while saying something positive in your mind. Oh, changing the words, the stories, the thoughts that you've been thinking. Because science is now saying that it's a two-way street. It's like a circle. So you can get mad about something and you can get that face and that posture and the scrunch down and the face changing and the hormones kick out to help increase the frustration and the sadness that you're feeling. But you can also reverse that. You can be angry and you can start smiling. You can do this laughter thing. I absolutely love one of my people, Christy West, amazing, wonderful, gold, almost platinum in our organization. And she, when she gets up and teaches, almost every time during every conference, will start this laughter that she has her people do. And it starts with absolutely nothing and it starts with belly laughing. And you will feel the energy change and pop up in a classroom of people, whether it is three people in the room to several hundred people in the room. Because that changes the chemicals. Because again, thoughts become things. Do you want to be a successful speaker? Do you want to build your Young Living team to Diamond? Because I'm assuming if you're on a business call, you're looking all the way at Royal Crown Diamond. Well, thoughts become things. And changing that, man, who needs a Cupid? Everyone already loves me. 
This isn't being cocky. This is accepting you. I am more than enough. Not only that, I am the whole package. I am loved, loving, and lovable. I am loved, loving, and lovable. One of my dear, dear friends, Ronan um, Kish, this is one of the things that he teaches and he shares and he really started bringing back into my life because during frustration and sadness, you can forget that. But just saying those words, I am loved, loving, and lovable. And say it with a smile and say it with those thoughts and think about how amazing you are. I am smart and full of great ideas. I am smart and full of great ideas. I am smart and full of great ideas. Because you know what? You are smart and full of great ideas. We just tend to cover them. We don't listen to them. Hey man, everyone wants to enroll with me. Everyone wants to enroll me everywhere I go. I can't even get a moment's peace because everyone wants to enroll with me. That's what you need to say. I finish everything I start. I finish everything I start. And start saying those words. I finish everything I start. Because we've had such a habit of not finishing, of setting goals, of deciding to do stuff, of saying I'm going to do this and not doing it, that our mind really doesn't believe us. So start with little things. Start with saying, I'm going to drink four ounces of water when I first wake up in the morning. And then do it. Check it off a calendar. Check it off a calendar. Tiny things. So you can go, man, look at that. I finished that. I said I was going to do it, and I did that. I did it. And celebrate every little success. So you start believing that you are amazing because you are amazing. And then watch the video, Thoughts Become Things. It's by Mike Dooley. I, I don't know whether Netflix or um I don't know whether it's on YouTube or what, but find the video. There are so many amazing videos on the mind in our thoughts and the power behind it. But this particular one, it's an oldie. It really is. But it really kicked in my mind and gave me such an amazing visual because we were designed and created to be amazing. You were designed and created to speak with authority, to speak with passion, to share your purpose with the rest of the world. You were given something amazing. Nobody is here by accident, not one person. And this particular video really helped me understand that we don't even know how far it can go. We don't know how big it can be, how amazing we can be, what we can accomplish in our lifestyle. But I can tell you this, if you will practice, if you will work on your thoughts, and regardless of what type of a class you're doing, what area you're gonna be speaking in, and you start taking those six tips we talked about and practice, even if you only practice one, just practice one and become amazing at it. Practice speaking louder. Practice speaking with your chin up. Practice speaking with your shoulders back. Just pick one and see the changes that happen in your life. Because you, you were designed to be absolutely amazing.